فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the explanation of the book Mukhtasar Ahadith Al-Siyam Al-Hadith Al-Sadis The sixth hadith Fi fadli Fi fadli tilawati Al-Quran Wa adabiha The virtues of reciting Reciting the Quran And its manners The virtue of reciting the Qur'an and its manners. An Abi Umamah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal iqra'u al-Qur'an fa innahu ya'ti yawm al-qiyamati shafi'an li ashabih. Rawahu Muslim. This hadith is an evidence for the virtue of reciting the Qur'an. And that the Qur'an, reciting it, has immense reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the Qur'an will come as an intercessor for the one who reads it the day of judgment, for him to enter Jannah. It will intercede for you, so you can enter Jannah. There's a hadith also narrated by Imam Muslim. On the authority of Nawas ibn Sam'an radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ يُؤْتَى بِالْقُرْآنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُؤْتَى بِالْقُرْآنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَأَهْلِهِ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ تَقْدُمُهُ سُورَةَ الْبَقَرَةِ وَآلُ عِمْرَانِ Nawas ibn Sam'an, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, On the day of resurrection, the Qur'an and those who acted according to it will be brought with Surah Al-Baqarah. And Ali Imran preceding them. وضرب لهما رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة أمثال ما نسيتهن بعد. نواس بن سمعان said the messenger of Allah likened them to three things which I did not forget afterwards. He said that the messenger of Allah he likened them, as in Surah Al Imran and Surah Al Baqarah, he likened them to three things which I did not forget afterwards. Qala, he said, Ka'annahuma ghamamatani aw dhullatani sawdawani baynahuma sharqun aw ka'annahuma khizqani min tayrin sawwafa tuhajjani an sahibihima. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he likened it to two clouds, غمامتاني, two clouds, or ظلتاني سودواني بينهما شرق, or two black canopies, two black canopies, with light between them. أو كأنهما خزقان من طير صواف تحاجان عن صاحبهما أو like two flocks of birds in ranks pleading for 
one who recited them. فَيَنْبَغِي لِلصَّائِمِ It is necessary for the one who is fasting. أَنْ يُكْثِرَ مِنْ تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ That he recites the Qur'an a lot. فِي هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ In these noble days. وَالْلَيَالِ الشَّرِيفَةِ And these noble nights. The hadith stopped a long time ago. The last is the Shaykh statement. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan. فَيَنْبَغِي لِلصَّائِمِ It is upon the one who is fasting. To be excessive in reciting in the Qur'an. In these days. These noble days. These blessed days. And also these blessed nights. فَإِنَّ لِكَثْرَةِ الْقِرَاءَةِ فِي رَمَضَانٍ مَزِيَّةِ There's a unique thing about reciting in the Qur'an. In the days of Ramadan. This unique virtue that are in it. لَيْسَتْ لِغَيْرِهِ مِنَ الشُّغُورِ you won't find them in any other month. لِيَغْتَنِمَ شَرَفَ الزَّمَانِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ So you should benefit from this month, this noble month. Benefit from it by reciting the noble book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this month, and the Qur'an have a very strong bond between the two of them. The Qur'an came down in this month. And Imam Muhafidh ibn Rajab al-Hambali rahimahullah, he has a noble book called Lata'if al-Ma'arif, page 201 to 202, Ibn Rajab al-Hambali. He's going to speak about a very important point, a very important issue, which is reading the Qur'an in less than three days. Reading the Qur'an in what? In less than three days. If somebody wants to read the whole Qur'an, the entire the Qur'an, in less than three days, Ibn Rajab is going to speak about, about that very important point. Ibn Rajab said, إِنَّمَا وَرَدَ النَّهِيُ He said the prohibition occurs. عَنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ Reciting the Qur'an فِي أَقَلَّ مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ عَلَى الْمُدَاوَمَةِ عَلَيْهِ عَلَى ذَلِكِ The evidences that came, because there are evidences, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, the Prophet said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, don't recite the Qur'an less than three days. The whole Qur'an. Sorry, don't, sorry, do not finish the Qur'an entirely less than three days. The fastest you want to read the Qur'an, the quickest you want to get it over and done reciting it, don't let it make, don't make it less than three days. Four days you can finish it if you want. Five days if you want you can finish it. But the Prophet, he prohibited Abdullah ibn Amr al-As to finish the Qur'an in what? Less than three days. And there's an ishkal here. The ishkal means there's a, a thought and a doubt that comes to some people's minds and hearts. Which is what? Why is it that we find a'im, scholars, such as Imam Malik, Imam Shaf, Imam Muhammad, the a'imma, kibar al a'imma. We find them reading the Quran in less than three days. Some of the Sahabas were reading it in less than three days. Why did they not stop? And why did they not stay away from this if the Prophet prohibited it, alayhi salatu salam? Sahih. If you go to the kitab Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, the Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, there's a chapter where he brings all the Sahabas and all the Tabi'een and the scholars, the A'imma, who were finishing the Quran in less than three days. Ibn Rajab is now going to uplift that doubt from your heart. And that question mark. And he's going to explain it to you what it means and what the Prophet meant alayhi salatu wasalam in reading the Qur'an in less than three days. He said, إِنَّمَا وَرَ... إِنَّمَا وَرَدَ النَّهِيُ The prohibition came عَنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ فِي أَقَلِّ مِنْ ثَلَاثَةِ مِنْ, ثل... آه من آه أَقَلَّ مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ عَلَى الْمُدَوَمَةِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ When the person, the prohibition occurred in reciting the Qur'an in less than three days, when the person is consistent on doing this. He's always doing it. 
every day of his life, every month, every... He's doing it every time. He's finished the Qur'an in two days, every day of his life. This is when the prohibition kicks in. فَأَمَّا الْأَوْقَاتِ الْمُفَضَّلَةِ As for the times which are virtuous, كَشَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ Like the month of Ramadan. وَخُصُوصًا الْلَيَالِ الَّتِي تُطْلَبُ فِيهَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And especially the nights when the person is trying to seek Laylatul Qadr. Especially the night when the person is trying to get hold of Laylatul Qadr. Or fil amakin al or in the places which are virtuous. Kamakka, like Mecca. Liman dakhalaha min ghayri ahliha. Like the one who enters Mecca and he's not from the people of Mecca. He's just traveled to Mecca. He's coming from another country and he's only going to be there for a very short time. So I used to have those type of people. It's, re- it's recommended for them, highly recommended. Al-Iktaru fiha min tilawati al-Qur'an To increase in reciting the book of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Ightinaman li fadilati zaman wal makan Why? So they can benefit from the virtuous time that they're in and the virtuous place in which they are in. And then look what he said after that. Wa huwa qawlu Ahmed This is the statement of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. Wa Ishaq Ishaq ibn Rahuya other than them too. من الأئمة from the scholars. وعليه يدل عمل غيرهم. And also the actions of other scholars. It also indicates that they are also true. This is the opinion that they are with. كما سبق ذكره as is previously been mentioned he said. The statement of Ibn Rajab is over now. Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan then says وعلى القارئ the one who's going to read the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, in this noble month, in this blessed month, it is upon that reciter, and يَتَأَدَّبَ بِآدَابِ التلاوة, to come with the manners and the etiquettes that are required from the one who's going to read the Qur'an. Come with the etiquettes that are needed. أَلَّتِي يَنْبَغِي التحلي بها. Come with the manners and the etiquettes that one should adorn himself with when reading the Qur'an of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in his words. The first one is ikhlasun niyyati lillah ta'ala come with sincerity come with sincerity in this noble action of reciting the Quran number 2 al qira'atu ala tahara reciting in the Quran upon purity be in a state of tahara number 3 as siwak Use a toothpick or a miswak that everybody knows. Brush your teeth, clean yourself properly. Why all of that? I told you two things here in those three points. Taharatul Zahir and Taharatul Batin. You purify yourself internally and you purify yourself externally. Internally by coming with ikhlas and externally which is Making yourself upon purity by cleaning yourself outside, brushing your teeth before you recite. Those are the three points, right? Why do we do that? Bin ta'zimi kalam illahi ta'ala. We are honoring the words of Allah. We are what? We are honoring the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, what is needed from the person is an yatalafada bil Quran. Utter the Quran, read it. Read it. Some people, they just look at the Mus'haf and their mouth does not move. Your lips move. You recite. Because the one who just merely looks at the Mus'haf, we don't refer to that person as a reader or a reciter and they don't get this reward. You don't get it. Because you're not a qari, you're not a reciter. You're a nadir, you're a looker. You're one who's observing. You're not a reciter. وَلَا يَحْسُنْ لَهُ ثَوَابُ التِّلَاوَةِ And you will not get the reward of reciting. Go to Ibn Abdul Barr's explanation in his kitab al-Tamheed, the 11th volume, 461, he talks about that. Abd Aziz ibn Baz, the fatwa he was asked, page, volume 24, page 300 and... 81. It is also upon the person to ponder, ponder on that which you are reading. 
Why? Because that is from the objectives that are required from you. Because that is the objectives in which is needed from you in reciting the Quran. Also, from the balance is and yes, Judal Qari, the reciter, he prostrates. If he comes by and he crosses by a verse, that there is a sajda in it, the verses of prostration. If he goes by those verses and he's reciting and he comes across those verses, he prostrates. But when do you do that? You're upon dahara and you're upon wudu. Also, the matter is, وَأَلَّا يَجْهَرَ بِحَيْثُ يَتَأَذَّى بِجَهْرِهِ مَنْ حَوْلَهُ Don't recite loud to the extent that the people who are around you are having, the, you're harming them. You're causing them problems. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, After Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi Wasallam in the Hadith of Sa'id al Khudri, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, the Prophet was doing itikaf in the masjid. And the Prophet heard the companions reciting the Quran very loud. They were reading it very loud. The Prophet moved the veil and he said to them, Oh people, every one of you is calling out to his Lord. Some of you should not harm the others in your recitation. And some of you should not recite over others on recitation. In another wording, in another riwayah, which Abi Dawood and Nasai narrated, and it also has a shahid, bin Hadith Bayyad, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which he said, fi salat in the prayer. Don't read loud in the prayer where you're harming the other person who's praying. Or you're reading the Quran outside the prayer, and other people who are praying are having, and they're finding problem from it. Stay away from that. Wallahu a'lam. I'll stop there for this hadith today, inshaAllah ta'ala, and the benefit that we took from it. Allahumma ja'ali al-Qur'an al-Azima rabi'a qulubina, wa nura sudurina, wa jila'a ahzanina, wa dhahaba humumina, wa dalilina ilayka wa ila jannati al-na'im. Allahumma dhakirna min huma nusina, wa alimna min huma jahilna, wa razuqna tilawatahu ala ma tuhibu wa tarda, wa aghfir Allahumma lana wa li walidina wa li jami' al-Muslimin. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب 